Oh, this is interesting, actually. This no excuses uh, pack against the uh, cinema. I mean, I think, you know, this is this. <laughs> deploy. You want this stuff deployed now, right? Because the filibuster vote and I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, um, uh, Nomi, you're you're familiar with like variants, right? Where you, there can be votes where it's not about we're not going to kill the filibuster. What we're going to do is say uh, a 60 vote threshold uh, to have debate for four days and a 55 uh, vote threshold for debate for six days. And then and then, you know, it's got to be something like that. Right. They're going to effectively neutralize the filibuster but make it seem like it's like almost a step up basis. So it has to be a really compelling piece of legislation. I, right? I mean, is that your sense of it? I mean, that's, that's basically what even uh, McConnell said, that he would delay through, pro I mean, create processes to, to delay and basically have the same exact effect as a filibuster. And then he threatened, I mean, this is on the McConnell side, not on the, the, the Democrats who are gonna be, um, you know, our new favorite Democrats to target. Uh, but he, I mean, he also threatened chaos if we tried to end the filibuster. Like it couldn't get any more chaotic than the filibuster. That's what I don't understand. What's worse? My point is, is that Sorry. with Manchin and Cinema taking these vows of chastity in terms of destroying the filibuster, the way out of it is to reform the filibuster so that it, it, it is not a killing of the filibuster. It is basically loopholes or a more Byzantine path to actually passing legislation, which can happen though, ultimately. And here is a form of pressure on Kristen Cinema that is, that is focused, I think it's articulated as uh, killing the filibuster, but I think it really is focused on saying like, you better figure out some measure. You better figure out a filibuster reform that you can sign on to. Here it is. Senator Kristen Sinema seems to think things are working just fine in Washington, D.C. She doesn't think that the Senate needs to be reformed. She thinks the filibuster should stay right where it is. She thinks your checks are getting out fast enough, that the tests are happening rapidly enough, and that everything is okay. For America to get back to work, the Senate has to get back to work first. And for the Senate to get to work, they've got to reform the filibuster. Countless hours of partisan bickering and back and forth. They don't prevent one case of COVID. They don't stop one death. They don't create one job. It's time to tell Kristen Sinema to get back to work. Work, or we'll find someone who will. No excuses pack is responsible for the Now that pack, the director of that pack, or I should say the founder, is Corbin Trent, who um was the first and former now former uh, spokesperson for AOC. I mean so and this Justice Democrats. And Justice yeah. Democrats. And so this is, you know, this is an attempt Corbin's great. Yeah. This is an attempt to well, to make sure that the Democrats don't have any excuses. <laughs> No right? I mean, it's basically, yeah. um, and uh, this is going to be, this is what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to put pressure, particularly on cinema, because I think there is a sense that Manchin, that Joe Biden can go and sit down with Joe Manchin and say, come on, man, you got to allow for some filibuster reform because we got to get that something Corbin done. talking to? I think it was actually. <laughs> It sounded like him. Uh, Corbin's on our show this week. He's going to talk about, because I think initially it just started to target Manchin. Find, find out if well, he you know, it. here's a question I would Make like. Some money. <laughs> it's like, where is, are there plans that are sitting on somebody's shelf um, that are specific mechanisms where you, you, you step down the threshold of the filibuster over the course of a couple of days or, or, or any other type of plan like that so that you haven't killed the filibuster, but you've gotten around it. I mean, here's the thing. Do you think I hear you? I hear what you're saying, and I think, given the record of the Democrats playing these games, that's very feasible. But I, in this moment, do you think? I mean, I, I, I honestly feel like Schumer does not want to play ball anymore with these people. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I feel like the the, the agreement that he made with McConnell, the power sharing agreement, was basically a threat to keep McConnell in line, and McConnell's just throwing whatever he can against the wall. I don't, I don't, I don't think the majority of Democrats. I think they're extremely frustrated with the way that the Senate's operating and the, and, and the fact that they can't get anything done. I don't think that they're going to go for a reform. I mean, I, and think, I think they might turn on cinema, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 they need cinema and mansion. Right. That's the point. They need those two vo votes 
to get rid of the filibuster. Yes. So my point is, is that what these guys should be doing right now, and I imagine they are, is here is uh, off ramps for cinema and mansion. Here's how they go out and say, I kept my vow not to destroy the filibuster. The filibuster is still there. Right. But after eight days or whatever it is, uh, then you can actually vote on the legislation and pass it with 50 votes. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying. Oh, I just but- don't think it's, we're in that moment. No, Sorry, no, I'm going. it's going to happen now, but I'm talking about two or three months down the road. They're going to wait until March. They're going to pass. Uh, I mean, presuming nothing happens for the next six weeks. They're going to pass reconciliation because it's going to take six weeks anyways to get the bill written, to get it, uh, to get the resolution passed, to do reconciliation. The reconciliation is going to happen in the first half of March is my guess. They're going to pass it under Bernie's. It's going to go through the budget committee. It's going to pass under reconciliation. But then you still have stuff like fix the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. Then they have stuff like. Maybe fifteen dollar minimum wage. Climate change action. Which Climate can't change go through reconciliation. Well, it depends on what it is. Like okay. you know, it's a, it's a function of like how much affects the budget. But there are stuff like Voting Rights Act that you cannot argue affects the budget. Right. And and I imagine there's others. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but but I know they're out there. They're going to want to pass that, and that's going to be sometime you know March, April, May, June. Maybe it is. Maybe around the time in the summer where, you know, you're at peak vaccination and everybody has gotten, you know, vaccinated if, if uh, Biden has it right. And um, and maybe we'll see it then. But we'll see like, um, you know, the, the, the you will start to get into the summer. I imagine they'll want to do it somewhere uh, around there where, you know, you have less scrutiny because they're still afraid. They think that people are really focused on procedural stuff. And the question is, what is the way that you provide cinema and mansion a way of them saying i vowed not to kill the filibuster and i i maintain that vow okay but i voted for the filibuster reform but my point is that i i just i don't see filibuster elimination being a wedge issue for voters cinema has to be concerned because well no no Manchin has to be concerned more than cinema because of the nature of his state and how it's a traditionally red state and the Republicans power that be could make this more of an issue for him. That's my sense of it. What's great about what Corbyn and, and this pack are doing is that they are making it a political issue for cinema in Arizona. Like, I just think there is an overestimation of how this would affect them politically. And yeah, I, I agree in their own heads so they can be the, the deciders I, as I Bush. Agree. I don't think that that's the way I think that that I I agree with what you're saying, but I don't think that's the way they approach it. I think the way they approach it is this. I do things as a moderate. I make I say things as a moderate. I hold stances as a moderate to create a brand. It's not that I'm going to pay a price for voting to kill the filibuster. It's that. I need to maintain my brand as someone who believes in unity. Yeah. And so I need to be able to put out there, I vowed to, to, to protect the, fil- uh, the filibuster, not because of that specific vote is going to hurt me with the voters, but it's going to cut into my brand. And I'm selling brands. Susan Collins does the same thing. No, I know, but I just think they're overestimating. Like the attack ad is, it would be different if, you know, that they voted with far left Alexandria Casio Cortez on, you know, Green New Deal. Like, I just can't see an attack ad being like they voted to. Well, end here, the it filibuster. here it is. Here People are like, well, no, no, it's not that they care about the filibuster. It's that they care about he's a liar. So they're going to take a clip. I will never vote to kill the filibuster. But when it came time to vote uh, okay. to kill the filibuster, he voted with Elizabeth Warren. I mean, here's the thing. They're both up for re-election in 2024. There's no, the, the ads are only to pressure people. This stuff isn't going to stay. These hits aren't going to stay. They only, those kinds of ads only work if you're like facing re-election or if it's a big enough, you know, issue. It'll only stay in a voter's mind for, for a few weeks. What I think this is more, I mean, I, I agree with you, Sam, that it is about like signaling that there are this, these moderates. But ultimately, if I'm if I'm reading this right with Emma, voters don't care if they if, if there's any sort of identity that's associated with filibuster is holding up government. And right now, and that's what I think is so brilliant about Corbyn's ad, is that 
people are waiting for their $2,000 checks. And you're sitting here dancing around with the procedure. Like, I mean, if I were to cut an ad, hopefully Corbin's listening and I'll tell him this week on the show, I would literally be like, Kirsten Cinema wants the entire country to kiss her ring so she feels more powerful. She is preventing you, yep, from your $2,000 checks and all these other things because she wants folks to come to her and ask her for her support. Whose side is she on? Her own side? Or, or Arizona side or the countryside or whatever it is. I mean, Arizona is the world capital for COVID right now. Let's just put that in perspective. Like hit her on that, hit her on everything and say she is too busy playing politics, holding up government. But here's, but here's, yeah, but here's the too. thing. Yeah. What is, why do they then make this vow? Like, I mean, you're thinking about it from the perspective of the voters, and I they're agree. they're stuck in I, 1982, and, like, cinema is one of the most calculating politicians I've ever seen in my life, and Manchin's just not that but bright. It, but if they're this this calculating, why do they do it? It is because they're, it, is, it is a core brand proposition, as Michael liked to say, that they are they are doing this to maintain a brand and the brand it supersedes the specific vote so they maintain their brand by saying that we're like i am a maverick or i am somebody who has respect and unity whatever because they've convinced themselves that that's the way that they 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 they, they, they keep their seats and their power and, and and part of it is probably also like I want everybody to come to me and, and, you know, like when it comes time for this reform vote, I want to be able to. And look, Chuck Schumer doesn't want there's nobody out there who's like, well, I mean, there's some people, but there's no lawmaker who's like, maybe there's some. But primarily they don't want the issue is not get rid of the filibuster or not like that's for people who care about like, hey, it's an undemocratic institution. Get rid of it. What they want is to be able to to the extent that they do is to deliver on some legislation. And so you can get, they can have their cake and eat it too if they just come up with a plan that show that is reform as opposed to kill. Manchin and, and, and Cinema can have their brand. Schumer can get his legislation. That is where I it- I hear what you're saying. I fundamentally just don't think that there's enough. I mean, listen, Mark Kelly was dancing around with it and he's out now. So that alone, I mean, you have Mark Kelly, who was just just one, turned the state back to blue, Arizona blue. Uh, he he's not in the same camp as Kirsten Cinema. She thinks that she knows better than him. I just I just don't think that this is playing out electorally and with voters the way that because it is a procedural thing, because it represents holding up government in a time of crisis. There is no brand of moderate or coming together or unity that the filibuster represents. It literally means stalling government. And I just don't think it plays well right now. The 2024 point, that's when they're up for re-election, is key to me because this will be an distant, a distant memory. The filibuster in 2024 when or or 23 when these ads are running i just like they'll remember the checks i don't think they'll remember any flip-flopping on procedural okay, well, senate motions you guys disagree with that we're gonna have a debate and you guys are frauds uh <laughs> i will haunt you i will haunt you sam <laughs> that's because we have a difference of slight opinion on on uh, strategy. You uh, you guys are frauds, yep. and that's the only thing sure. I'm going to tell you right now. Cool. I mean, this is and the show. <sighs> Just another misogynist coming after. Two vocal women. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that. I just no diminished her internet. Uh, got out, right? well, yeah, I just diminished her. I just huh? stopped her internet. 